From New York, with Kevin McCullough and uh, AFA Today with Kevin McCullough. Heard every weekday at the same time. Thank you for being here. A live shot for those of you watching via the uh, American Family Channel. Uh, that's uh, New York City. That's Times Square. Not, uh, not too many people affected by the uh, shutdown looks like there. It just looks like a normal day in the busy uh, metropolis of New York. But uh, thank you for taking the time out, for uh, joining us today. Maybe you have the day off in an unexpected send home. Uh, we're talking about the shutdown. We're talking about uh, the efficiency of government. We're talking about uh, the, uh, the way in which we discuss this and the way we think about it. Um, uh, you know, uh, as believers, what, what's, our, what's our primary overriding goal? in how we discuss this. Is it to prove a political point? Is it to prove that Republicans were right and so therefore, uh, you know, uh, good on them for shutting the government down and they'll show those mean, ugly liberals in Washington, D.C. what they have coming to them? Is, is, that, is that the tone and the language and the, and the idea? I don't think so. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I don't wear a jersey. Uh, on that uh, in that game uh, I, I I vote by principle and I want to be led by integrity and truth um, and there's problems there's problems when you when you when you have allegiance to a party instead of God and that doesn't mean I don't vote it doesn't mean we don't uh, take a good hard look at uh, what the uh, issues of the day are and who's out there and who's dealing with them but um, I, I don't and I'm not saying that I'm even uh, neutral in terms of uh, how this uh, shutdown came about. But I will tell you this. People are watching. People that don't watch politics normally are watching how people of faith are responding to this. And if we want to have influence with them at a time when it really matters, we need to understand that we kind of need to walk in their shoes in the day and age in which they're living now. So that's my goal. How do we talk about what is going on from a Christian perspective. I'm interested in your thoughts. Evidently, a lot of you have them. So let's, uh, let's go to the phones, and let's start with Cliff, who's calling from North Carolina. Cliff, you're up first on AFA Today here on AFR Talk. Welcome. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. Um, I was telling the screener, I am a bivocational pastor who actually works on Fort Bragg here in North Carolina. Uh, I'm affected by the shutdown. The, we had to go in for a few hours today for an orderly shutdown, and now we're at home. Um, quite frankly, I believe I'm not a Republican, Democrat, or whatever. I believe the Lord is teaching us. One thing He's teaching us is trust. The Bible tells us to trust in Him with all our heart and don't lean on our understanding and and not acknowledge and all our ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct our path. Mm -hmm. He's showing us number one to trust Him, knowing that food and shelter and all of that He said He'll supply all our needs. So we're not supposed to trust in the government to do it and all of that. That's one thing. Number two, it's also teaching us how to be good stewards hmm. over the money and things that he's given us. Because Proverbs tells us it's basically we're a fool if we don't prepare for the rain. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to rain one day. So if we don't prepare for it, that's foolish. That doesn't mean we're fools, but what we're doing is foolish. Um, and also, it's also showing us that family is tremendously important. Um, during these days that I'll be home and off, I'm going to take time to spend time with my kids. Hmm. Declared your appreciation month, and, and me being a pastor, hey, what better appreciation can I have to go fishing with my boys or take my daughter, you know, to ride her scooter or something like that. So I really think we have to look at it from that perspective as opposed to just the money perspective. I, I love, Cliff, I love the practicality of the way you've analyzed it, and uh, I would consider you a binge thinker, uh, someone who uh, <laughs> commits themselves to removing the confusion by thinking biblically and pursuing clarity. Thank you for starting our conversation off right in such a positive way. Who can argue with any of the four things he just said? Who can argue with that? There may be stuff that, that this shutdown convicts us on. We, we may need to become better stewards of what we earn so that we do not get taken by surprise when times like this come. Same thing happens when a major company lays off, lays off people, etc. cetera. Uh, but, but that's one of the things that Cliff uh, emphasized. Being a good steward is something we can learn from this. It's something, friend, think about this. It's something that we could possibly teach our government to do better. In all reality, if we could teach them to be better stewards of how they spend their money on a consistent basis, where would be the downfall in that? 
We, it, it, righteousness exalts a nation? What if we were more righteous in how we allocated dollars through our federal spending? What if we, what if we uh, did a better job of not wasting money at the federal level so that we had more to show for the taxes that were paid? Who would argue with that? That's a basic, common sense, no-brainer. But today, sides are being taken, and feelings are getting hurt, and people are writing mean emails to radio stations and networks and so forth. I've seen program directors, not, not anyone related to AFR, but uh, other networks that I'm in the communication circles with. I've seen uh, you know, ridiculously funny and sarcastic and mockery uh, be sent through the, uh, the texting and the social uh, media and so forth. A lot of people are having a lot of fun with this. There are some people that are hurting or at least worried. 888-589-8840. Let's go to uh, Marilyn in Kansas. Hi, Marilyn. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough on AFA Today. Glad you're here. Hi, thanks for taking my call, and I've really enjoyed hearing hearing some of the other people talk, and I really enjoyed that last young man that that uh, that spoke. But um, I I'm a a firm believer that you know our our nation has turned so far away from our Lord, and it just it breaks my heart. Um. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um. And I really believe our government is there to do their job, and we as as people of this great country are here to do a job as well. And we are here to be vessels for our Lord. And, you know, I I believe that that we're really good at, at talking a talk, but when it comes to putting those words to action, I think that's where we're kind of falling. How? Um, Explain to me what you, you're referring to something, but I want to make sure I understand your illustration. I, well, in just the way our country is is going right now, the way that that things are happening, um, we've we've taken a back seat to a lot of things, and if if one person is offended, then that one person's voice is heard. Where are we? Where are we in our nation saying, no, that's not okay with us? It's time for us to take a stand and take our country back. And this is a great time to do that. And, you know, we, we have the whole world looking at us right now. And if we as Christians and as a true Christian nation, if we start standing up and if we start letting them see, wow, you know, what happened? What happened to turn that around? What a better way to be witnesses for the whole world right now than for us as Christians to stand up and say, uh-uh, we're not going to take this anymore, and we're going we're gonna to start acting on our words and start doing what we're supposed to be doing. I understand. The all right. The kidding around and all of that stuff, it all needs to stop, and we need to stand firm together take this country back. I hear you, Marilyn. Okay, thank you for your thoughts. Appreciate that. Uh, 888-589-8840. How should we be thinking, experiencing, discussing uh, the shutting down of our government, Uh, the sending home of 800,000 employees, the uh, doing the things that are going to be done in order for uh, this to uh, uh, to go forward. There's going to be things that 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 are that are done. So far, it appears that there's not going to be a ton of response to this by the free market. I think mostly because the Medicare and the Social Security checks are still going out. So as long as the money is going into the system, uh, Wall Street's not having a problem with it. Uh, but on the uh, on the back side of this, some people's uh, bring home pay may be delayed. It may be. They, they may get it back, but it may be a period of time before they receive it. Are, are you ready to stand in the gap and be Jesus in their life and say, hey, come on over tonight. We got an extra, we're, we're putting in uh, four, four extra cups of water in the soup and we're going to have uh, four more chairs around the table. Come on over. We got plenty. But what, what do we do? How do you think Christ would be most honored in the handling of the shutdown? And it's, it's, it's not, I don't think it's a left-right thing. I could be wrong. I do think that there's a lot of lessons to be learned here, and and I think personal responsibility has a lot to do with it. 
and being prepared for the day when um, a calamity happens is certainly a good lesson for us to learn. But uh, but how are you experiencing it? What what are what are the th- conversations you're hearing uh, around you? Eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. Let's go to uh, Josie, who's calling from Michigan. Hi, Josie. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough on AFA Today. Glad you're here. Thank you for taking my call. Also, um, as far as the shutdown goes, it won't affect me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I work every day and I manage frugally on my what I have. I am also not a Democrat or a Republican, although I do vote primarily uh, very, very conservatively. And I really want a Christian in power. I don't want someone that uh, has nothing for the Christians to be. I'm not proud of my country like I was 20 years ago. I'm 61 years old, and it breaks my heart as what the government is trying to make us believe that there is no money. There is no money because we became the borrower. We are the slaves to the lender. And um, I don't know what else to say except that I don't believe that the shutdown right now is going to do anything except hurt the poor. If that makes any sense, like you said uh, earlier about Checks may be late. Well, checks being late for the elderly and the disabled is going to be pretty rough. Sure. And this is this is just the tip of the iceberg. This we're just now seeing the beginnings of uh, oh, what 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 do they say? Like the harbinger. <laughs> what happened in the Bible before? That's what's happening in the United States right now. We are turning away from God. And the Christians aren't speaking up. They're not saying, no, we don't want this uh, same-sex marriage. No, we do not want to keep borrowing money from China or wherever. We want to take care of our families. And now with this new Obamacare, I'm even afraid people are going to die waiting to get into the doctor's office because it's not their turn yet. They've got too many people ahead of them. And... uh, they're going to be seeing uh, money taken out of their checks if they don't have insurance. I mean, come on, this is getting scary. <laughs> For my children um, and my grandchildren, I'm worried about my children and grandchildren. The state that we're in now is just beginning. I don't see Josie. I, I don't think I don't think that uh, I don't think that anyone would say that uh, you're being unkind or unfair. That you certainly, as a grandmother and a mother, have every right to the concerns that you're expressing, and I think that you're doing that in a respectful way. And I think that that's an important piece of the communication puzzle here. I think it's okay to have some fun. I think it may even be appropriate to uh, tell a joke or two. Uh, I think that we need to limit our freedoms. Uh, when we come into contact and are aware of those that are in pain. Uh, I think that's just a normal thing. Uh, I think that we we can have a little bit of levity and say, uh, yeah, I guess government doesn't solve all the problems all the time. That That's an, that's an easy assessment to make. The question is, and what Josie was saying, I, I agree with partially, that America is bringing a lot of this on herself. We're not, we're not minding the store the way we should be. And that starts first and foremost with recognizing what God wants to do with our country. We are not first and foremost on our knees begging him on a daily basis, Lord, make this nation into your tool to use for your purposes and to grow your kingdom. And I don't even expect secular people to do that, friends. I'm talking about the job of the church. See, if we had people on our knees every day before God begging, Father, Make our country what you intend for it to be. Make your church within our country what you intend for it to be. Make us powerful in our dependence upon you and very, very weak in our dependence upon ourselves. If we were, if we were of this mindset, do you realize the radical strength that would be supplied to us? Here's another one, and this is hard, this is hard to, uh, to avoid altogether. Um, There's also a very specific idea about what brings about fantastic wealth for people. Um, And I've I've talked to to a lot of millionaires and billionaires 
uh, about this, and I have found it to be 100% true in every one of them that I've talked to. If we took care of the widows and orphans, if we gave sacrificially to care for those who are in need, and, and the reason why government subsidies caring for them in need is not giving to them in need is because that's forced compulsion. It's, it's uh, uh, mandated taxation. There is nothing involved in the heart that says, uh, I'm, I'm doing this because it's going to help other people. It is the, the force of a gun being held to your head saying, give us your money. But if we were to give generously, personally, if we were committed ourselves to feeding orphans and caring for widows, to doing just those things, as the Bible lays them out, I believe God would pour out more abundance than our nation could handle. I don't mean giving money to a TV preacher, and I don't mean... Uh, you know, uh, especially doing one that <clears throat> buy my hanky and God will give you a Ferrari. I don't buy those th things at all. But I do very much earnestly believe that if we were to follow his example, to care for those, particularly orphans and widows, that God's blessings upon us would be unstoppable. And maybe that would trim what we need government to do. How refreshing would that be? I'm Kevin McCullough, an honest discussion about the shutdown on AFA Today here on AFR Talk. 